I've got a fun episode today, or at least I think it's fun because we're talking about bird poop or scat or bird excrement if we want to keep it professional. So I wanted to start with a story about a day where I was walking with some friends in the neighborhood and their dogs too, and they started talking about their dog's poop. So one of my friends starts saying, well, you know, of all the intelligent things we could be talking about right now, we're talking about dog poop. And me being a super nerd, um, I chime in with, well, actually, poop is really interesting and you can have some really intelligent conversation about poop. And so that is what I'm going to share today is just some of the interesting revelations that bird poop or bird scat has taught researchers. And something I do want to point out is that studying bird poop or poop in general is actually a really efficient way to conduct research, especially if you're trying to study a bird's diet, because rather than observing a bird all day and watching everything that it eats, you can look at the poop and you can do, take DNA samples and there you go. You can learn very quickly about what a bird eats. So it's very cheap. It saves a lot of time. And also it's not very invasive. There's some crazy ways researchers have studied the way birds eat or their diet. And some of that can involve dissection. So bird poop is the way to go. So to start out, uh, conservation is one of the interesting things that bird poop helps researchers study. And actually, this is going to come up a lot throughout this video. But at a basic level, um, there's been some interesting direct research for conservation purposes. The Audubon had a really cool article all about studying bird poop and the insights it's revealed. So again, really intellectual stuff can come out of bird poop. But one of the research efforts that they highlighted was how they can take DNA samples from bird scat and then compare that against a database. So they would extract sequences and compare those against a database of sequences. So let's say, for example, we are analyzing some bird poop and we take a sample and we want to see what the diet is. So we extract the DNA and in our database, we can compare it and find that, oh, they were eating currants or they were eating a specific insect so they can make those comparisons. So all of this can help researchers understand the flora and fauna of a given area. And that can help for restoration projects where we're trying to determine what the native plant composition is for that area and try and revive and restore it. The next really cool thing that I found, which also came from this Audubon article, was a study on hummingbirds. And what they did was collect poop and analyzed it. And they were trying to figure out the composition of a hummingbird's diet. And we know they drink nectar, they drink nectar from plants, and uh, they also eat some small insects. But researchers like to drill down and get the specifics, and that specific information can be really helpful. So what they found is that the majority of insects that they ate were native insects. Now they drank nectar from a wide variety of plants, including ornamentals and non-natives. But when it came to their insect diet, it was mainly native insects. And that wasn't the cool part. The cool part is that what this told researchers is how much more important planting those native plants are. Because when it comes to insects and native plants, there's a very specific relationship. So an example is monarchs and the milkweed plant. The milkweed is a host plant for monarchs where monarch butterflies will lay their eggs and the caterpillars will hatch and they'll eat from the milkweed. They'll have their cocoons. And then once they metamorph into butterflies, you know, they fly off. But monarchs and milkweed are not the only example. There are so many different host plants for very specific species of insects. And so out of all of this, researchers were finding that it's very important to incorporate native plants into our regular landscaping. The next really neat thing that poop can show us, and we can use this in, in our daily lives, is roosting and perching habits. One of the best examples is using bird poop is a great clue to find where an owl kind of hangs out. So if you were looking for owls, what you would want to look for is some whitewashing. But outside of owls and hawks, 
bird poop can also show researchers what bird was roosting where. A great example, and I'm working on a video about this too, is Carolina wrens using old hornet's nests as winter roosting sites. And on some occasions, they found the Carolina wren in these hornet's nests, but on other occasions, what they found was excrement on the outside. So they analyze it and sure enough, it's a Carolina wren. And with more and more research get gathered, they can start to see that this may be something kind of consistent or kind of typical for a Carolina wren, something that's in their behavior specifically. Bird excrement can also teach us about seed dispersal. And I'm not talking about just, oh, birds poop out seeds. But again, researchers can really drill down and they can define the range in which a bird is dispersing the seeds or the type of seeds, or if there's a specific seed that a specific bird is dispersing, or efficiency where one species of bird might be a better disperser <laughs> than another species. And the thing about this is, again, it tells us so much about this really neat interconnection that animals have and how they play a role in their environment. And I talk about this all the time, how native wildlife have specific roles in the environment. And apparently taking a dump in it is very important too. On the note of dispersal, uh, another really cool study that came out was about how the decline in birds can lead to a decline in native plants, and part of that is dispersal. So what researchers found was that as native birds were declining, native plants were in that local ecosystem were starting to decline. And I want us to think about ecosystem not in some sort of big geographical area, but an ecosystem can be a very localized area. And there is a such thing as local extinction events that can happen where in a, in a designated geographical area, a certain species is nowhere to be found. That doesn't mean that it's completely extinct and wiped off the face of the planet. It's just in that specific area. It's nowhere to be found. Poop can also teach us about predators. So this isn't quite about bird poop in this case, but it's about predator poops. And so the poop can teach us about what type of predator is eating what type of animal, and, um, and in this case, birds. Or if, if a certain predator has a bigger impact on a certain type of bird or just birds in general versus mice or voles or things like that. And actually this was used to analyze the impact of cats and cats definitely have a huge negative impact on birds. Now, I don't want there to be any hate in the comments for cats. I love cats, but I am really in favor of keeping them indoors. And actually, this is not just for the sake of the birds, but really for me, it's the sake of the cats and protecting them overall. Um, I have said this before in other videos, but I will give grace to those who have farms and there is a role that cats play in that situation, but at least spay and neuter them because even that contributes to their overall welfare. So while poop is not so seemingly glamorous, um, it does give us so many clues and just really amazing insights into the behavior of an animal or the health of an animal or its impact on the environment. So uh, if you are a scatologist, you may be the life of the party in disguise.